Hey people, Fernando with another video here for the channel addressing the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Takeaways from America's second largest bank failure. This is what they're talking events. about. Just walk us through all that went wrong here. Well, there are a number of things to take into account. Some of them are reflective of broader problems in the tech sector. Some of them are kind of idiosyncratic to this one particular bank. So uh, this bank, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, did a, a few things that in retrospect look not so wise, including that they invested in these long dated mortgage backed securities, which seem safe, uh, perhaps, you know, they're not inherently risky. I think the lay person, when they hear mortgage backed securities, they think that that means something like inherently very risky that's going to blow up. That's not the case here. What happened was that as interest rates went up, the value of those oh. underlying um, securities went down. And so as a result, there was a, a lot of fear about the solvency of the bank. And you had kind of a bank run that a lot of the customers started pulling their money. Oh, yeah, that thing, that bank run thing. Guys, that is exactly what caused this. Surviving the economic collapse based on my experience in Argentina with the economic collapse of 2001. It's a bank run when people lose faith. I talked about this so many times when people lose faith on the system it collapses that's why you see it happen in cases like this it seems so mathematical like it's it's about numbers and money no it's about feelings once you lose faith in that piece of paper once you lose faith in that institution once you lose faith in that company or in that bank you go and you take your money out it is the same time every single time this happens People go, ask for their money back, and it falls apart. No, ins no financial institution can survive a bank run like this. Out of the bank. And, you know, more broadly within the tech community, obviously, the era of rising interest rates has been very painful for a lot of those consumer, a lot of those customers that were banking with this institution. So that fed on itself as well. You know, Catherine, I think it's such a great point that you point out when you say mortgage bank securities, especially in this context, to sort of condition that so people don't unnecessarily become alarmed. But help me understand how much of a concern and how much of a failure do you think was what we're now learning was the lack of real funding diversification at this bank? It seems like they made some unwise financial decisions. They had a lot of money coming in. They were trying to figure out what to do with it, and they invested it poorly, essentially. I mean, that's an oversimplification, but I think that's basically what happened here. Now, the mm -hmm. question is, how much contagion will there be to other institutions in the financial sector? How much of this is just about dumb decisions made by uh, SVB, and how much of this is about broader linkages within the banking uh, sector? And, and, sh and like, is it reasonable um, mm -hmm. that there's been some panic about some of those other regional banks, for example, that you mentioned? And I think of we course. don't know yet. This is, I, I want to be clear to viewers, this is not as bad as it was in circa 2007, 2008, when we had this They're global afraid. financial They're crisis. So this afraid. is nowhere on the scale of that. Uh, but it's still not a good thing. There could be some contagion. And if you are one of the companies that banked with uh, SVB, with, with Silicon Valley Bank, it's obviously not good for you. Um, your deposits are insured up to a point, uh, but, but not in their entirety. And there's a question about, is it going to be difficult for companies to make payroll, for example? Oh, you know why? They always play this card. They always play the, oh, we were so dumb, we were so naive, we invested poorly. You're always left with a bill. You, the average guy, these guys, they get bailed out. They're just too big to fail. They always get saved, and you are the one that gets screwed. It is going to be your money that is going to be bailing out these bastards. Folks, it you know, could be potentially something a lot worse than we are seeing so far. As I always say, just prepare the same things I've talked about so many times. You definitely want to get surviving the economic collapse, especially giving this kind of scenario. Here, I talk about pretty much this. It's the same thing one, one time after the other. When you saw it in Greece, when you saw it in, in Iceland, whenever you see that people just you know, understand that they're being ripped off, they immediately go to the bank, ask for their money back, the first guy gets it. it. It happened back then. The first guy, the first couple guys that get their money out, sure, they're fine. It's going to be one second later, you're screwed. You didn't get your money out in time, and you're done. 
diversify. Yeah, that is a point. That is actually a thing. Don't have definitely don't have all of your money in the bank. You probably want to have a lot of that in your own hands. You want to have some cash. You want to have some precious metals. You want to have some uh, a form of uh, other tangibles that are worth something. You know, those things that you see there in the back, you know, those you can turn into money very quickly, very fast. People always buy those, and they usually buy them for a lot more money than you bought it back a few years ago, especially when you know what you're getting into. A, a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, I think that's a, a heck of a lot safer than giving money to these greedy bastards that we're seeing here. And it goes on. I mean, we'll see how this ends, but it's not looking good at all. Anyway, prepare because things are complicated. See you on the next video.